Um, so what I have here is some um, silver nitrate. It's a AgNO3, right? Um, silver nitrate actually does have a ton of different applications. Um, it used to be used a lot uh, back when people were manually developing their own film, like black and white film. Um, not so much anymore because, uh, all right, so I'm just uh, swishing it around. This is a Florence flask. Typically we use these for mixing and not for cooking. And then what I'm adding here now is sodium hydroxide. This is NaOH. We've talked about this a couple times. Um, do you remember what the common name was by chance? It's commonly uh, called lye, uh, L-Y-E. And it's actually typically the number one ingredient in things like uh, oven cleaner or Drano. Wait a second for that. And what else I have here, I didn't live in my bottle, but this is uh, concentrated ammonia. Um, this stuff is way more concentrated than you have in your Windex bottle. Uh, the stuff that you have in your house is probably about 1 to 5%. This is about 30%. So it's much stronger. And we'll see, uh, we'll see if we see anything happening as I add it to the silver nitrate, which is what's in here right now. And we should see evidence of a reaction. Oh God, no. You guys see anything? What happened? Yeah, and that, that is a precipitate formation in the solid. Anything else happening? Oh, what happened? <laughs> like a magic trick, right? Where'd it go? All right, uh, it just went away. The silver's gone now. I, I made it evaporate. No. Um, I'm now going to go ahead and add the sodium hydroxide to it. We should see something else happen here. See if we see anything. Oop. Now it's more of a black color than we had before. All right. See that nice black color there? That's actually a silver oxide, AG2O. And now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more ammonia to it and see if anything else happens. Adding it dropwise. What happened? Oh my goodness, like a magic trick. So evidence of a reaction. So the, the formation of the solid is evidence of a reaction and dissolving the solid like that too is also evidence of a reaction. All right. Uh, next thing I have here is dextrose. Um, we did talk, I think this was, a, was one of the practice problems we had earlier. Um, you know with a sugar, a carbohydrate, because it has the OSE ending. And this is actually related to, it's a five carbon sugar. Uh, basically what a sugar, a carbohydrate is, you have a carbon structure where every single carbon has an OH group on it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some in here. Turns out that a certain silver solution is like to react with sugars. And we'll see if we see anything. Man, I need my stopper. Where's my stopper? All right, so I'm gonna pour a little bit of this in here. Almost instantly saw something, right? Oops, wrong. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mix and mix and mix. And another reaction should happen. Let's see if you guys can see if it's what's going on. So did it change color at all? Did it went like almost a brown color now? Unfortunately, I gotta keep it stirring, to get the reaction to go. Let me know if you guys are seeing anything. You guys seeing anything? Any reactions happening? What kind of reaction are we seeing? <laughs> Is it changing color? You guys can see the camera in the... What the heck? <laughs> Say what? What happened? <laughs> do you, uh, do you, do you, is it a little bit more obvious that there's, there was silver in here now? Yeah. yeah so uh, basically what we did here was uh, the first thing I made was called, it's called the Tylens reagent. And it's, uh, the other name for it is ammonical silver nitrate. And it turns out that that's actually a pretty good uh, solution we can use to test for the presence of sugars. And what happens, it does a redox reaction. Remember, we talked a little bit about redox last time. Essentially, what redox reactions are is when the charge on ions change, and the silver plus ion becomes silver metal in this reaction. So uh, what hap what's happening, once again, is silver is being reduced, meaning the sugar is oxidized. 
Um, people actually used to use a similar reaction like this. Some labs still do. Um, not so many anymore though, but uh, you can do a similar reaction for looking uh, using copper as well. Um, the thing about the copper reaction, you don't get the nice uh, shiny silver there. You get basically a, a, a red brick precipitate. And what people would use that for is uh, testing for sugars in urine. Um, can you guys think of the significance of that? Like, uh, not necessarily a drug test. Like, uh, is, is it good or bad if you have uh, sugar in your urine? It's bad. And why is it bad? What is that, what is that indicator of? Um, it's actually an indication of diabetes. So uh, what they can do, uh, what, or you can do a urinalysis of somebody, you know, check for the copper precipitate, similar reagent, get it to precipitate out if there's sugar there. Um, the thing is though, that it's prone to giving a lot of false positives, which is why a lot of labs don't do it anymore. Um, so certain pharmaceuticals, certain diets, like uh, food, food that you eat can give a positive, but it's definitely a, a reason to, to get them to dig further. So if, if, if labs are still doing this method, basically what they'll do is they'll do a blood workup after that if you get a positive. The thing is though that if you're negative, you're for sure negative, you're not diabetic if you don't have any of that in there. Um, people used to also uh, make mirrors this way. Um, you basically, you take a, gla a glass sheet and you cover it with formaldehyde. Um, formaldehyde is similar in structure to a couple different sugars. And then you can treat it with a Tollins reagent and then the silver will just plate out on the glass and then you cover it with another sheet of glass to kind of protect it, and then you put it in a frame, so then you have a mirror. Uh, most mirrors nowadays, though, are made out of thin sheets of aluminum, though, because it's actually a lot cheaper than an actual silver mirror. But if you actually have one of those old-fashioned mirrors, one that have the big, like, uh, wood frames on them, those are typically actually silver on the inside. And don't try to go break your grandma's mirror now to get the silver out of it, because silver's actually dropped dramatically in price. Uh, I actually can clean this off very easily. Um, all they got to do is add some concentrated nitric acid to it, and nitric acid actually dissolves a lot of metals. And it, it'll actually give off a brown gas, and that part of the demo I cannot do in the classroom because the gas it gives off is highly toxic to humans. So I will, do the, I will actually clean it in the hood, but I'll probably actually record it to tack onto the end part of this video that I'm recording. But pretty cool, right? Um, I actually have one of these that I made, and I actually checked out a little bit more to actually plate the whole top of it. And I basically uh, dumped out the water, the liquid inside, and cleaned it out with not nitric acid, just to clean out the chemicals in there. And it's been sitting in the display case over by my office, uh, right above the planetarium. It's been there for about uh, three or four years now. And it's, it's, it's permanent. It doesn't come off until you, until you actually add the acid to it. It stays there forever. Christmas ornaments, right? <laughs> Thank you. 